What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am taking on a very specific case on social media. Daniel Larson and Grace Vanderwall. Let's start off on the person of prominence in this situation. Grace Vanderwall. She was a kid who was on America's Got Talent or something like that and she did a phenomenal performance that got the world's attention back when she was like 13, right? She had a few albums, did decently well, not someone I've ever heard of, and apparently dealt with some drug issues and kind of fell off musically. So that is Grace Vanderwall and what I know of her. She's now like a TikTok person, kind of, you know, keeping up with things, but she's not a huge star, right? So Daniel Larson is a guy, he, he was a kid who showed up on the news when he was also a child for being abused terribly by his parents, specifically his mother, and I think that's gonna be important. And he was removed from their care and put into a, a home for kids with severe disabilities, mental disabilities. I want a storm chase when I get older. Hopefully I'll be on the news one day. As Danny says goodbye, he has this to say to the people at the Tennyson Center. Thank you for having me, it was a pleasure being here. And uh, they did a lot to help me. I made lots of friends. I learned how to do stuff I never knew how to do before. And it's much better now. Thank you. He is severely mentally disabled. He has no real grasp of reality. And you can tell that through a lot of his posts and the things that he does. Grace, I admit to everything that I did today. And I, I really want our relationship to work. And he's very susceptible to manipulation and um, being taken advantage of. And he's very susceptible to false promises. And he's very susceptible to falling for people, right? He has a lot of trauma in his past. So... Daniel Larson became famous for posting TikTok videos saying that him and Grace Vanderwall are in a relationship. This message is to Grace Vanderwall <laughs> and to the fans. <laughs> we are officially dating. Grace Vanderwall has told me to make this public. We are officially dating. So please, everyone, stay tuned. Now, it, it would be very clear to anyone looking at this situation that that is not the case, right? He is missing teeth. He's, he has the intellect of a child, like he stopped progressing mentally at a very young age. And his decision making is less than average, right? So let's talk about what got Daniel now famous on social media, where he is more famous even than Grace Vanderwolf. He's posted these videos time after time about how him and Grace are supposedly trying to meet up. And here's where my issue comes in with all this. There are people all over the internet creating fake accounts, pretending to be Grace, her family, all these other situations, managers, PR people, celebrity managers, and they keep reaching out to him going, hey, Grace wants to meet you. You just need to show up here. So he's gone to like a coffee shop, he's gone to an olive garden, he's gone to an IHOP, and all, all the while, he live streams all this. Everything in his di daily life, he's homeless, he's, he's now essentially homeless, he's been like kicked out of his disability center that he lived in, I think because of either his age or because of his antics, I don't really know. So he's homeless, he's dirty all the time, he's terribly dirty, he's missing teeth. Up until like a couple days ago, he had a huge thing shaved out of the center of his head because... He was convinced that the Vanderwalls wanted him to shave his head and they were helping him do it, but then they stopped halfway through or something like that. Like, And again, he's never met these people. They've never actually spoken to him. This is all things that people are making on social media and taking terrible advantage of a severely mentally disabled person online. There's another situation where this is going on as well, and I don't want to go on a rampage on that, but is a highly autistic kid who has made it to adulthood, 
I don't know the situation with his parents, but it doesn't sound good. And he goes out every single day posting every alcoholic beverage he has. And then he turns into this jerk where he tries to fight people. He's racist. He's very sexually aggressive. And now he's gone at Daniel Larson and being like, hey, there's only one disabled person going to make it in Hollywood. I'm about to go and fuck all the stars. Daniel, your, your audience is mine. And I'm not even going to shout this kid out because, again, I'm not giving it any more notoriety than it that deserves because it deserves none. People should be ashamed for pumping this kid up because they do. They're like, yeah, man, do it, do it, do your thing, live your life, get it, bro. And it's like, dude, y'all are so messed up. You want to watch this person destroy their life when they don't even have the basic skills to manage in life. You're helping them sink their ship instead of helping them. And that's my issue with this whole Daniel Larson thing. This kid, I think he's in his 20s. And here's the problem. People call him a pedophile. And I think he's rightfully deserved that at this point because he was 17 when he began this infatuation with Grace Vanderwall when she was 13. And he's kept it going for years. So she was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And he was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's not okay, right? So that right there, anyone creating false accounts or making it seem like this is something that she's also doing, hey, you're you're essentially involved in pedophilia and encouraging it and actually being an accessory to it because guess what? This Daniel Larson guy keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer. To this Grace Vanderwall. Now she's an adult now. And she has since made a public statement going, I don't know this man. I have no relationship to him. This has gotten completely insane. And you are a pedophile, dude. You've come at me since I was 13 years old. That's crazy. But again, how are we going to look at this guy, Daniel Larson, who has been in the system for his entire life? He was terribly abused by his mother and was taken away from her. Why do you think he has an infatuation to earn a woman in his life or to create enough grandiose acts to be worthy of this high statute woman? Because he thinks nothing of himself because of the way his mother treated him. We want to joke about daddy issues and stuff. Mommy issues are very real as well. This kid was put through so much trauma by his mother, the woman that was supposed to love him more than anything, and fucked him up, beat him so bad that his brain doesn't work. Like, that's the storyline of the Joker, the new one, with Joaquin Phoenix. That really happened to this kid. And now he's been essentially out on the streets on his own, And he keeps showing up to these places thinking he's meeting this woman that wants to meet him. And here's what makes it worse. He sits there knowing he has no money. And these people on live go, hey, we're going to pay the bill. Whatever it is, we'll send you the money. And either they do and they take it back or they just don't. So then he has to dine and dash. Hey, Daniel. Hello. Do you remember me from from Olive Garden? I do, yeah. Yeah? What's going on today, man? So I had somebody somebody paying. And the IHOP wouldn't let me. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, you guys, I have people talking about yeah. you. Oh, sorry. You're good. I I'm, was going to have somebody else pay. Okay. And the IHOP wouldn't let me. And so they called you guys. Gosh. And there's all these terrible videos of him sitting in a thing, completely defeated, kind of, you know, you could tell he gets what's going on, but at the same token, he doesn't have the ability to accept it. So then he starts punching himself in the face and like pulling his hair and attacking people. And he keeps going to jail. And it's like, man. This disability service did him enough to get him a phone, which is you did just enough to get this man killed because you're now allowing him to go out there and broadcast himself and his thoughts all over the fucking internet. For what? So any person of any age, of any 
country that doesn't give a shit about anyone can get on there and encourage this guy to ruin his life. He is essentially, drop my phone, he is essentially thinks he's in a relationship with Barbie. He thinks that Barbie is his girlfriend. He's never seen Barbie. He could even know that that's just a toy. But he believes in his mind because of all the things people are doing and creating and sending him and whatever. We have to be better as a society. I am not willing to sit here and believe that Russian bots have created Daniel Larson. I think it's shit people, likely kids, with nothing better to do than sit around and watch a severely disabled person destroy their life. Guys, I don't know what needs to be done, whether it's litigation-wise, whether it's whatever, because I see a lot of great thing for the disabled community on TikTok, and there's a lot of great stuff that happens to really lift them up, empower them, and give them a platform. But man, there is also a huge community of people that just want to watch their life and the struggle that it is. Why is prison TikTok a thing? Who's supposed to have a phone in prison? But prison talk is an entire thing. There is entire communities of people that just watch videos of disabled people doing things that are not socially acceptable or embarrassing to them or something like that. And they are creating entire pages off of this. This kid, I call him a kid because I think he's young. I think he's early in his 20s. Is sitting homeless, probably so confused, having no idea what real reality is, only seeing what's directly in front of his face and going, okay, that's what people say. That's what it is. He hasn't had parents. He hasn't had family. He's been on his own in his own reality trying to intermix with a world that's fucking with him. We have to be better. We have to be better. As far as TikTok trends go, um, you know, Jess and I were talking. She thinks that there's a conspiracy out there. If you guys are a part of TikTok and you see this, North Sea TikTok has been a new thing. Um, It's popped up on a lot of people's feeds very randomly, and there's a lot of it. She had the idea, is there a conspiracy behind it? Are they trying to prepare us for like a flood or multiple hurricanes? And I thought, okay, that's an idea. Could they be trying to get people interested in the ocean, get people de-interested in the ocean? It is very odd that it all comes up for so many people so randomly all at once. Like you have to kind of put your, you know, critical hippo eyes up a little bit and be like, ah, meerkat, what are we looking at here? I don't, I don't know what's up. So let us know. Let us know because our family's interested in this. I got a video going on TikTok right now where a lot of people are responding. They've seen the same thing. I just wanted to end this on a little bit of a lighter note. So let me know what you guys think about North Sea TikTok. Uh, try not to get involved in the Daniel Larson stuff. Just again, I'm, I'm letting us be aware of it so that whatever pops up in your For You page or whatever, if you can do something about it and if you can put your voice in there to make it stop, you should do that. Because again, I'm watching people's lives be ruined on a daily basis and I see people going live that are homeless. And again, let's talk about the crazy people that do this NPC stuff where they stand there and go, thank you, yum, yum. Thank you, yum, yum. And they do this for like six hours just standing on a corner in New York. Thank you, yummy pizza. And they just do, and they do these like weird robotic moves. Hey man, people are losing their fucking minds and streaming it online. And we're watching it going, look at this crazy son of a bitch. Would you look? He dyed his hair pink and he's standing there in superhero tights and he's going super yum yum. Thank you. Yum yum. And people are just sitting there sending him hundreds of dollars to do this. What is wrong with us? Inflation's worse than it's ever been. Most families don't have enough food in their fucking house or gas to get to work. And there's people sitting on TikTok sending thank you yum yum. Thank you yum yum. 10, 15, 20 dollars every day just so they'll keep doing this dumb shit. Someone's got to explain it to me. I know I tried to end it light. It didn't work. Guys, I love you. Like this episode if you made it all the way through. Subscribe. Love you so much. And we'll see you in the next one.